Josephson Engineering, booth 1027. I'm David Josephson, and Dave Gordon and Kelly Kay are the other two uh, owners of the company. We're happy to be at the AES and answering questions for uh, GearWire and friends. The new microphone is the C716, which looks very much like um, the 715. The uh, housing is our new development. It's actually um, a hard aluminum foam basket. It is patent pending. Um, it's, uh, the concept is to eliminate all of the reflections inside the uh, housing basket that would normally be uh, produced by bars on the sides or rings around the top. That's all gone. It's a kind of a random uh, fixture uh, for the microphone capsule. There's no other mounting structure inside. It's very strong and hard. Uh, it's also a fairly effective pop screen. Very much like windscreen foam, but it's a hard aluminum alloy. Uh, the capsule inside is the dual diaphragm capsule that we have in the 700 series that we've been making for some time. Um, but instead of being a figure eight, which it is in most of the 700, it's a cardioid only. So this is the um, basic um, Series 7 capsule uh, with a single cardioid output. Um, this is, it looks, this microphone looks very much like the 715, which is over here, which is um, the same housing, uh, but on the back there is a little port that uh, with the provided screwdriver, uh, you can put in and turn the shutter in the back to change it mechanically from cardioid to omni. Um, they break. They're hard to make well. Uh, we started, the, the Series 7, the 700, is not a new design. We've been making those since 1992-93. And we made one with switches. It works fine. But, hey, we have these separate signals already in the microphone. Recording them separately and making that choice in mixdown makes a whole lot of sense to us. So suppose we want to change the, the pattern in mixdown. Suppose we want, well, it sounds too close. Let's make it a wide cardioid. Nope, session's finished, can't do that. You can do it in mixdown if you have the W and the X channel. So we don't like to copy. We don't like to make a microphone. I mean, if, if you want a U87 with switches on it, you should, that's what you should have. If you want this sound, um, you know, the other sauce, secret sauce that we bring to the to the party is being able to, to have this flexibility. And we figured that doing it that way was more useful to the end user than having a bunch of switches that you have to set during the session. Uh, the, the capsule design is very similar to the old Sony C37 uh, capsule. Um, and this provide, this is a large diaphragm, but single diaphragm uh, microphone. And it has a, a particular uh, sonic character that is uh, a lot of people find very uh, useful for uh, studio work. It's a very uh, gentle high frequency roll off rather than the sharp peak and uh, more rapid roll off that you would expect from a dual diaphragm capsule. The, the capsule, the basic capsule from the Series 7, that is the figure eight in the 700 and the capsule in the 716 is derived from the Siemens AKG uh, C12, CK12 design. Um, that was a very significant uh, advance by Siemens in 1954 when they came up with it. We have improved it fairly significantly. Um, it isn't any easier to build than it was, which is why AKG stopped making it. Uh, we've made some changes and improvements, but it has a particular very um, uh, precise sound in cardioid, uh, and it's very much present without being hyped. Um, so we use that capsule for the figure eight in the 700. 
in cardioid for the 716. So anytime when you would want a really um, uh, precise, not punchy, uh, but present sound, um, you would want to use that. The, the capsule in the 715 is a completely different animal. It is a single diaphragm. It's large diaphragm, but it's a single diaphragm. I don't know if you can get a picture of the, of the backside very, very well, but this capsule is derived uh, from the large single diaphragm design uh, that first came out in the Sony C37. It actually came out before that in a, a microphone made by Tilati in Germany, but uh, it has a mechanical shutter in the back uh, to change it between cardioid and omni. Um, but it has a, the, the presence peak at the 10, 12 kilohertz range is a little, is the same height as the presence peak in the CK12 design, but it's broader and it rolls off much more slowly. So instead of having a sharp drop at 18, 20 kilohertz, it rolls off much more evenly, which means that it's a much gentler sound uh, without having this um, uh, fairly steep phase shift that you would expect at the, at the high end. So it's a different tone color from the CK12 design, and it's, we find people using it for um, instruments and singers that might sound too harsh otherwise. It isn't, it's not something you can correct with EQ. It's not a matter of rolling off the highs. It's a matter of where the roll off is happening more gently.